A pleasant good morning. Today we welcome you to St. Michael's Methodist Church Sunday morning worship service on this fifth day of July, 2020. Participating today are readers Ramon Bonamy and Tatrika Woodside. Alonso Cunningham will give a saxophone selection. The sermon in Christ today, always, will be delivered by our pastor, Reverend Dr. Philip A. Stubbs. The Sacrament of Holy Communion will be administered during this service. Stay tuned and allow the Spirit of God to minister to you. The Apostle Paul in his letter to the Galatians wrote, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He writes again in 1 Corinthians 1 and 30, But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Join us now in our opening hymn, number 313 in the Methodist hymn book, To God Be the Glory, Great Things He Hath Done. So loved He the world that He gave us His Son, who yielded His life an atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in. Let us pray. Abba, we give you all the glory and all the praise for all the things you have done and continue to do in our lives and in the life of St. Michael's. We come before you on this Communion Sunday, the first Sunday in July, 2020. And we want to declare that you alone are worthy. Your name is Adonai. You're the one that's worthy 
of our praises this morning. Thank you, Abba, for your faithfulness towards each one of us over these months. And we want to say to you that you are our God. And thank you for being a faithful father. We recognize that there is no shadow of turning with you. You change not. Your compassion fails not. As you have been, thou forever will be. Thank you that you have promised to hear the prayer and the petition of your children and to nourish us as we come each day with your body and the blood of your son Jesus Christ. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. And it's on you that we depend. Help us to exalt you in this service today so that you can get all the glory in our time spent here this morning. Be with those who will participate in this worship time. Be with our praise and worship time, our hymns. Or those who will read. And we especially remember our under shepherd, the angel of this church. Holy Spirit, speak through him. Let your words penetrate the hearts of every listener. Ah, oh, how your word, we send it forth even now, and we ask it to accomplish what it is declared to do. Abba, you are indeed our strength, and you are our Redeemer. Hear us and bless us as we humbly make these petitions before you this morning. And as your Son has taught us, we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into any temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and forever. As we all say, Amen and Amen. At St. Michael's, we encourage our members to internalize and meditate on God's Word. This is done by lifting up a memory verse each month. For the month of July, our memory verse comes from Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. It is our tradition here at St. Michael's to repeat the memory verse twice. So please join me. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. Again, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. Dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. At this time, we will have a special selection from Mr. Alonso Cunningham, a special saxophone selection.
Today's reading comes from Psalms 145, verse 8 to 15. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are all over his works. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. The Lord upholdeth all that fall and raiseth up, up all those that be bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee and thou givest them their meat in due season. The word of God. Testament reading is taken from Matthew chapter 11 verses 16 through 19 and then continuing on to verses 25 through to 30 and it reads as following. But what shall I like in this generation? It is like children sitting in marketplaces and calling to their companions and saying, we played the flute for you and you did not dance. We mourned to you and you did not lament. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton, a wine-bibber, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is justified by her children. Verses 25-30 At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father. Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight, all things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son will to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. you Lord I will exalt you because you are my safe place you are my refuge yes. you are my fortress yes. and if no one goes with me and no one worships and prays you I know you will still be with me and I'll have no fear I will exalt you I will exalt you You are my God. You are my God. Oh, let's just worship Him. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. Oh, I will. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. Because you are. You are my one more time, I will exalt you. I will exalt you. Oh, just reverence yourself in these moments and exalt the Lord. I will exalt you. Mm, I will, I will. I will exalt you. Because you are my God. You are my God. Oh, my hiding place. My friend and king my friend and king anointed one most holy oh my hiding place my hiding place my safe refuge my treasure lord you are my friend and king anointed 
thanksgiving to God, we come to this moment of sharing, and we share from our journey as a church family. We are thankful for our journey, St. Michael's Methodist Church, during our moments of challenge, our moments of celebration, and this year, 2020, has indeed been a time of challenge, grounded in the understanding that beyond the pandemic, there is providence, a God who is present with us, and we are with our God. And we come from that place of faith to proclaim God's word. And on this blessed day, we lift up from Mark 16, verse 15, these words from the heart of our blessed Savior. And it is my hope that for all of us and each of us, as these words are lifted up, a sacred word would be imparted and will give life to all of us. Mark 16, verse 15. Jesus said to his disciples, Go into all the world and preach good news to all of creation. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Today we focus on the words good news. I love that phrase, good news. Our blessed Savior said to his disciples as they were around him, and were receiving life and were receiving instruction for their vocation from him, he said to them, you are to go into the world, all of creation, and share good news. We thank God that God is good, and we thank God that out of God's substance, only good comes. And in this moment, we focus on good news and what it means to be a person of good news, what it means to be a person who is caught up 
in the rhythm and routine of religion framed by living, celebrating, and sharing good news. Two stories. The first, a family story. Some time ago, I was present at a couple's 55th wedding anniversary. And as we gathered with family members and with friends, oh, more than 100 of us present for the celebration. The couple was there, the husband, the wife. And in the midst of all that was said and felt and experienced, everyone, just about everyone knew that that solidarity, that marriage, that family unit with now children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren was held together primarily by a good wife, a wife who understood grace, a wife who understood fidelity because we knew the lifestyle of the husband. He was a challenge. She was a good person who gave life to her family and held her marriage together when she had more than one legal and spiritual reason to leave it. A second story about a good man. I will name this man. His name is Deacon Leviticus Adderley, Uncle Lou. Deacon Adderley served for 18 years as the principal of St. Augustine's College, and for thousands who experienced him in that role and prior to his approach to vocation in the role as principal, always experienced his goodness, his beaming smile, his focus on the welfare of others his being comfortable in his own skin. I celebrate him in this moment as a good person. And when I talk with this now widow after almost 60 years of marriage, and when I recall Deacon Leviticus Adderley's life, I ask them, what does it mean to Live out good news. What has it meant for you? And both have said to me several things. One is this. They have lived out. Now the widow, Deacon Adderley himself deceased. They have lived lives of goodness. They have lived out the good news. Because they have remained connected with the God of their faith. And as we respond to our blessed Savior saying to us, go into all the world and preach good news, we appreciate that this instruction that comes at the end of the Gospels, this instruction is some instruction that is in harmony with what happens in the first chapter of the Bible. Our blessed God says, after creating, after calling out of nothing, this wonderful creation, after darkness is punctuated and anchored by light, as the waters and the earth are separated and boundaries are created, as living things are created in every sequence of creation, God paused and said, this is good. And at the end of creation, in that phase where human persons, the first man, the first woman, Adam and Eve were created, God makes this emphatic statement. This is very good. Do not miss it. Because goodness was in God, all that God created was good. And God paused and declared that it was good. And for those two people of faith, now the widow, after 55 years of marriage, in a challenging marriage, a marriage, though challenged by her husband's less than gracious living, 
She was able to build and hold together a wonderful home. And Deacon Leviticus Adderley, Uncle Lou, through his good acts, through his goodness, was able to mentor thousands of young Bohemian students and athletes. Each one of them have said in different ways, I was able to have a vocation framed by a good life because I stayed connected with God as my source. And so on this day, as we talk about our Savior's statements, indeed his instruction, his mandate to his disciples that they are to go into all of creation and share and spread good news, be agents of good news. We appreciate, sisters and brothers, that even as God called creation out of his being, and in every instance, in each instance, it was good that we are called to be people of good news, who share good news because we have it inside of us. This is not a call to be perfect, but it is a call to have a vocation, a way of life, a lifestyle that is seen in the integrity of our progress. That we are not perfect, but we are always progressing. And so they, the two witnesses, the widow and Uncle Lou, have said in different ways, I was a person of good news. I am a person of good news. I share it in my family. I share it in my community. I understand vocation because I'm connected with God. And the goodness in God flowed through them. Flowed through them where it really counts first in the home flowed through them in their primary routine. And in both lives, thousands experienced good news. On this day, as we share in the sacrament of Holy Communion, we recall our Lord's offering of himself so that he might be an agent of good news. Indeed, the good news is all about our blessed Savior, is it not? Confronted with the reality of sin, and sin has so many expressions, sin, pain, evil, suffering in the world, our Lord did not simply analyze that which was wrong. But he had in his substance the capacity to bring good to the bad realities of life. And those bad realities are core realities of pain and evil, human suffering, isolation, expressed in so many ways, in so many ways in the human family. And we see in the life of our blessed Savior, we see in his teachings, we experience in his suffering as his body was broken for us, as his blood was shed for us, we experience him as the one who is good news. Look at the Gospels, friends, as they chronicle the life of our Savior. And you will see in the worst times, he is present being a person of good news. Pilate would rule over him, and our Lord is there, and in his profound silence, this one who was son of man and son of God, profoundly quiet before Pilate, refuses to become a spectacle in Pilate's court. And in doing so, 
he was a person of good news. Our Savior, as he encountered time and time again religious persons who swam in the shallow pool of self-righteousness and religion that celebrated their projections of themselves instead of a worship of providence. When he condemned their empty religiosity, he was being a person of good news. In the very worst moments that he encountered, our Lord continued to be a person who was life-giving, to be a person of light, to be a person who was salt, to be a person who was mediator and bridge between God and the human family. And so with integrity, he was able to say to his disciples, you go into all the world and share good news. And so today as we break the bread and share in the cup, in the sacrament of Holy Communion, know that all who would follow Christ are welcomed at this table and know that this is a good news meal that we come and we are in solidarity with Jesus Savior of the human family who is the focus of the gospel the focus of good news we come and we identify with him we worship him we remember him in the sacrament of holy communion and when the benediction has been given and we rise from the table we share and move out a good news about jesus with family with friends with associates with strangers in the community, we share good news with them. If we have truly been at table with the one who is good news. I recall and remember the words of Francis of Assisi in this moment as he talked about sharing the gospel. He said to his disciples go and share good news and if you need to use words go and share the good news of Christ and if you need to use words a widow with more than 55 years in a difficult marriage, was a good news person because she was connected with her God and she held a wonderful family together despite the challenges of her difficult marriage. And she did it mostly, not with words, but with her life. Deacon Leviticus Adderley, Uncle Lou, principal of St. Augustine's College for some 18 years. Those of us who knew him could feel his smile and the graciousness that came from his smile. And we remember his acts of empowerment of students and athletes by the thousands. And the words of Francis of Assisi are so appropriate. Go and share the good news of Christ. And if you need to, use words. There's something there. God bless you. Amen. Let us break bread together.
This is a good news table. We gather around this table to worship our Lord, to remember Him, to be in solidarity with Him, to be nourished even as we worship. And so I say to all, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. It is indeed right. It is our joy and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who on the night when he was betrayed took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me we pray the prayer of humble access lord we come to your table trusting in your mercy and not in any goodness of our own. We are not worthy even to gather up the crumbs under your table, but it is your nature always to have mercy, and on this we depend. So feed us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, that we may forever live in him and he in us. Amen. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break And so we pray together. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, 
and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all humankind. Amen. Friends, we are thankful for the disciplines of the church, for prayer, for meditation, for scripture, and the study of scripture. In this moment, we exercise one of those disciplines as we move to pray. We remember the words of our blessed Savior. You are to pray continually. Pray continually. One understanding of that instruction is that we are to get in alignment with God's will, that we are to get into alignment with God's will in and through prayer. And now we pray for the children, youth, and young adults of St. Michael's, and all of those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. As a church family, we are in solidarity with those who are celebrating a movement forward in life, and we grieve with those who say farewell to sisters, to brothers who are, have entered the larger life. And in this moment, on this day, we think of two of our founding members, Mrs. Mildred McNeil, 95, who passed this last week, and Mrs. Iva Ingram, 94, who also passed on this week. We thank God for these stalwarts, Mrs. Mildred McNeil, Mrs. Iva Ingram, for their decades of service, for their family life, for their life within St. Michael's Methodist Church and the larger Methodist communion. We honor them. We celebrate them. Iva Ingram, Mildred McNeil. May their souls rest in peace and rise in glory. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are humbled as we speak of life and death because these are concerns with so much weight that only you are able to carry them. And so we come to you we thank you, O oh God, for carrying us as believers, as members of this church family over the weeks and months of 2020. We bless your name. We thank you for being a good God, for your grace, your patience, your power released from your heart of love time and time again. On our behalf, we give you thanks. As we are reverent and before you, O oh God, we lift up confession of our own sins, our failings, our mistakes, our sins of commission, our sins of omission, our sins that we have done, and our sins of things left undone. Forgive us, O oh Lord, we pray. We are before you, asking for your forgiveness, for a release of your grace. Recalling with expectation and in faith your words to us. That if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Forgive us, O oh God, we pray. We receive your forgiveness. And now, in this moment, we pray for sisters and brothers celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Bless each one. May each one choose to become a fully devoted disciple of Christ, O oh God, we pray. And on this day, we pray 
that you might bless each one celebrating an anniversary or birthday with grace and wisdom and good health for all grieving. The McNeil Circle, the Ingram Circle, the Roberts and Williams Circles give grace, O oh God, we pray. And now, O oh God, I pray that for all of us, you might give us grace for the living of these days so that we might be grounded in you. We might honor you in the midst of so much bad news. May we be good news people, I pray, O oh God. We pray in this moment for our children, our youth, our millennials, our young adults. We thank you for them. We thank you for their presence in our midst. We could not imagine St. Michael's without them. And we pray, O oh God, that by your spirit and through your grace, through your hand of providence, you might minister to each young person who's a part of this church family and that they might be open to your ministry. In this moment, we thank you for the stewards, the members of this church who've exercised good stewardship during these strange days, who've honored you with disciplined stewardship of their time and talent and treasure. We pray your blessings upon the material substance, O oh God, brought to your house so that there might be no lack and every need might be met. May your hand of blessing, O oh God, be upon these members who've brought their tithes and offering to your house, who honor you in so doing. We are thankful that your hand of blessing is upon them and upon their households. We bless your name, O oh God. Your work of grace moves us to be thankful. We thank you for your presence in our lives. We bless you in this moment, even as we say hallelujah, 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 amen.
benediction as we bring our time of worship together to a close. In reverence, let us look to the sacred presence of our God. May grace, mercy, and peace of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with each of us and all of us now, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>